Problem number two of the 58th International Math Olympiad 2017. Determine all real valued functions defined in the set of real numbers such that for all real numbers x and y the functional equation on the screen holds. This is my second attempt to solve this interesting problem. Let's try a constant function, f of x equals a, where x are all real numbers and a is some constant real number. If we plug in value a for the values of all the functions in the functional equation, we can easily see that a must be zero. This gives us the first, even though trivial, solution, f of x equals zero, for all real numbers x. The second simple observation is that if function f of x satisfies this functional equation, function minus f of x also satisfies it. If we plug in function minus f of x in this functional equation, we can simplify it back to its original format with function f of x, which proves it. The third important fact is that if such function is not constant zero, then its value in zero is not zero. Indeed, if we map zero and x into this functional equation, then we have that f of x equals zero for all real numbers x, which is contradiction. Now, if we map zero and zero instead of x and y, we will have that function value f of 0 squared equals 0. Also, if we map 2 and 2 into the same functional equation, we'll have that function value of 2 squared is also 0. The next fact important for solving this problem is that the only root of such function f is 1, so that f of 1 equals 0. The proof of it is the following. If we map the value of a root denoted by letter b and x for x and y, we will have that this composed function f of f of b times f of x equals f of bx minus f of b plus x. And since we know that f of 0 is not 0, we can use the fact that bx must not be equal to to b plus x for any real number x, because otherwise the value of function f of x in 0 will be 0. So bx is not equal b plus x for any real x. This is only possible if b equals 1. Otherwise we could find x equal to b divided by b minus 1, which would force f of 0 to be equal to 0 which would be contradiction. This proves that the only allowed value for root b is 1. We have proved so far that the value of function f in 0 squared must be equal to 1, so that f of 0 can be equal either 1 or minus 1. The value f of 2 has the same property, but it's not really used in the solution of this problem. We will prove later that this functional equation forces function f of x to be injective, which means that it cannot have the same value in two different arguments. So we will prove later that the only allowed combinations for values of function f in 0 and 2 are either f of 0 equals 1 and f of 2 equals minus 1, or vice versa, f of 0 equals minus 1 and f of 2 equals 1. And in both cases, f of 1 equals 0. These graphs also agree with our already known fact that if function f satisfies this functional equation, then function minus f of x also satisfies it. Let's concentrate from now on on the case when f of 0 equals 1. Then, for every function f of x that we'll find, we will add the corresponding function minus f of x, for which 
obviously f of 0 will be equal minus 1. The next step is to understand that if a real number z belongs to the range r prime of function f of x, which means that there exists at least one real number x such that z equals f of x, we can map one of those values of x and zero for x and y in our functional equation. And this will give us the formula f of z equals 1 minus z. Since by definition the value of function f for any real argument x is also real, we can apply the functional equation recursively, from which it follows that f of f of z equals z, provided, of course, that z belongs to r prime. Such property of a function is called involution. If we could prove, based on the functional equation, that every function f of x that satisfies it must have the range that is the entire set of real numbers, such functions are called surjective, meaning that for every real number z, there is a real number x such that f of x equals z. Then we would be done. The answer would be constant function f of x equals 0, function f of x equals 1 minus x, and its minus f equals x minus 1. We have proved that for all real numbers that belong to the range of function f r prime, function f of x has this property that f of f of x equals x. Uh, this property is called involution. So function f is involution in r prime. And from this it follows that if we prove that our functional equation forces function f to be injection, which means that for any two distinct argument x and y, the values of function f of x and f of y are also distinct. Then from that it follows that function f of x is also surjection, which means that for any real number x, there is a real number y such that x equals f of y. Indeed, if you look at the diagram, each set R prime consists of mutual images. For each x, f of x equals 1 minus x, so that f of 1 minus x is again x. Then, if we assume that there exists such real number y, for which there is no x, such as f of x equals y and then consider number x that is the value f of y, so that x belongs to r prime. Then f of x equals 1 minus x, and so that number x is the value of function f of two different arguments, y and 1 minus x. So if we prove that this is impossible, in other words, that f of x is injection, from that, y equals 1 minus x, which is the value of x. That proves that y also belongs to r prime. Contradiction. So, from injection, it follows that f is also surjection, which makes it a bijection, which means complete one-to-one -one correspondence between the arguments and the values of function f. Now let's prove the required property of function f that we will denote by star sign. If we plug any real number x and number 1, then we'll use the facts that f of 1 equals 0 and f of 0 equals 1, and we'll obtain this equation. 1 equals f of x minus f of x plus 1 for all real numbers x. It will help us to prove that f of x is an injective function. This quite brilliant proof was suggested by DNKYWIN, guest of AOPS forum. If there are two distinct real numbers A and B, for which values of function f are equal, it will be proved that it's impossible and these two numbers, A and B, are also equal.
we can use the property denoted by asterisk to prove that we can always subtract 1 from an argument a function f and its value will be increased by 1. As the result of that, we can assume without losing generality that one of the numbers a and b, for example a, is less than 1. We will simply subtract 1 as many times as needed until it becomes less than 1. And if we subtract equal positive number from both a and b, then the function values of both will be increased by the same number n. That is, their values will still be equal. This is done to ensure that a minus 1 is negative. Then consider the quadratic equation x squared minus bx plus a minus 1 equals 0. That's where the fact that a minus 1 is negative plays its role. It makes the discriminant of this quadratic polynomial positive and ensures that it has two real roots. We'll call these two roots x and y. By Vieta theorem, x plus y equals b and x times y equals a minus 1. And we'll use these variables x and y in our functional equation. Note one interesting detail. If we manage to prove that the functional equation forces at least one of these two variables x and y to be equal to 1, then we'll prove that a equals b, which is our goal in this proof. Now we have written our functional equation as it is and replace x times y and x plus y by a minus 1 and b respectively and then use property asterisk to rewrite f of a minus 1 as f of a plus 1. And since by our definition f of a equals f of b, these two terms cancel each other and we get that the composed function f of f of x times f of y plus 1 equals 0 by using the star property for the second time. From the last equation, f of f of x times f of y plus 1 equals 0, it follows that f of x times f of y plus 1 equals 1, since the only root of uh, function f is number 1. This we can rewrite as f of x times f of y equals 0. And finally, from this, it follows that 1 of these two parts, f of x or f of y, must be equal to 0, from which we deduce that x or y equals 1, by using again the fact that the only root of function f is number 1. And this proves that a equals b, which proves the injection property of function f. Conclusion. We have identified the following functions that satisfy the given functional equation. The first one is the f of x equals 0. The second is a linear function f of x equals 1 minus x. And f of x equals x minus 1. We have proved that these three functions were forced by the functional equation and there are no other functions that satisfy it. We're done. I think that this problem is harder than problem number three in this year's IMO.